Broadcasting from Skyline High School World Headquarters, it's time for SPTV News. Hello Skyline! This Friday we have something special for you Spartans. We got exclusive interviews with some local specialists informing us about the importance of mental health. But first, let's fill you in on some news. The Guitar Club is having their annual band showcase. Auditions are on May 16th and the show is on May 26th. Any non-PE student who would like to run the 5K on June 2nd need to sign up on Ms. Shelberg's website by Friday, May 13th. If you have any questions, please contact Ms. Shelberg at our website, shelbergt at isqua.wednet.edu. Do you want to witness history? If so, Mr. Rosemont is leading a trip to Washington, D.C. in January for the presidential inauguration. Fifteen Skyland students have already registered for the trip, but there are still a few more spots left, and there are also a few more weeks left. So, if you are interested, please contact Mr. Rosemont for more details. The second annual short film to Skyline is May 19th at 7 p.m. To enter, email film or the link to Ms. Bacon or give a copy of the film on a flash drive to the library by Monday, May 9th. The film must be less than seven minutes with no minimum length, as well as the director's name must appear on the film and the film must be school appropriate. If you have any questions, please contact Ms. Bacon senior Colin Tran or junior Meg Amarthur. The Spring Musical is today and Saturday and it's only five dollars with an ASB card so try to make it out. This year Evergreen Philharmonic presents 2016 Concerto Concert featuring Skyline's very own Anna Johnson, Brandon Lim, Hannah Ko, Courtney Crocker and Ben Richardson. Come out to support them Friday May 13th at 7 p.m. at the Issaquah High School Theater. Tickets are five dollars for students and eight dollars for adults. Many students at Skyline struggle with mental health issues, yet no one feels comfortable talking about them. To reduce this stigma, next week, Skyline's Mental Health Awareness Club, Mind Matters, will be holding Skyline's first Mental Health Awareness Week. Every day next week, you'll have the opportunity to get a ribbon to wear around your wrist if you or someone you know struggles with a certain disorder. On Monday, you can get a black ribbon for depression, Tuesday is blue for anxiety, Wednesday is purple for eating disorders, Thursday is orange for ADHD, and finally on Friday, wear a white ribbon if you or someone you know struggles with self-harm and or suicide. Skyline, let's show our support for the students who are struggling. To get us ready for next week, we're starting with three mental health segments right here on SPTV. We'll hear from teachers and industry professionals about the ways to live a more healthy and mindful life. First, we'll turn it over to the Activities Coordinator, Ms. Tharp, and Counselor, Ms. Flemmer, to talk about ways to balance and maximize your time. Hey there, Spartans. I'm Ms. Tharp, and I'm here with Mrs. Flemmer, and we are here to talk to you about some tips for living a balanced life. I know that students and staff at Skyline can often have numerous obligations and responsibilities on their plate, and it can seem like a never-ending balancing act. One of the first tips that we have is something I'm sure many of you have heard over the years. Use a planner, set reminders in your phone, and create habits that can help you. An awesome book you might want to check out is called The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Creating time for yourself is also a priority when trying to live a balanced life. We found that students and staff who take time to meditate, take walks, or head out for a hike in the wilderness find it a refreshing way to slow down their busy lives and create time to care for themselves. Another strategy we heard from students was to stay away from the negative social media. If that means unfollowing someone or just blocking them all together, if it helps you to feel better and creates less negative energy in your life, we encourage you to try it. Also, keep in perspective most people only put the best of the best on social media and they use it as a shield. We never really know what's going on in someone's life unless we take the time to have a real one-on-one -on -one conversation. I agree, Ms. Tharp. Real, authentic conversations can really help to create connections and a deeper sense of understanding. I know that keeping life in perspective is easier when you can hear someone else's story or share your own. Don't forget that daily exercise is an important focus for all of us. Walking, yoga, playing athletics, Zumba, Pilates, climbing, bike riding, hiking, swimming. There are so many ways that we can each take time for 30 minutes of exercise a day to help our bodies and our mind. That brings us to our last point. We'd like you to try to find someone who can be there to support you. It might be a counselor, a teacher, a coach, or a friend, perhaps a family member. Someone that you can connect to as a neighbor or a leader in your faith or even just someone who's a mentor. One thing we know is life is a lot easier when we have people in our lives who can support us. Thanks, Ms. Tharp. You're so right. Us counselors and teachers are always here to help support our students and our staff. And we hope that this segment has offered each of you some new ideas and old reminders on how to live a balanced life. We hope to see you at Impact Night on May 10th, 6 to 9 p.m. here at Skyline. In the meantime, we hope you have a great week. See you there. Good job. 
Our next segment focuses on mindfulness. Some of you may not know what mindfulness is, so pediatric nurse Jita Sahoda is here to share her knowledge. Sahoda is a trained mindfulness and yoga instructor, as well as working with teens at the Lucille Packard Children's Hospital at Stanford University. Hi everyone, and thank you for having me on the show. I teach mindfulness to teenagers and help them learn how to cope with different kinds of stress. Life as a student can be very stressful. There is pressure to finish homework and participate in extra activities. Sometimes there are problems at home with arguments and family conflicts and challenges. There's also the pressure of fitting in with your friends, dating and conflicts at school like bullying. While this is going on, teens are trying to form their own identity, separate from their parents, and that can present conflicting choices. Life can be overwhelming and we can think about it constantly. When you feel a lot of stress or you feel bad about the past or worry about the future, those thoughts can take over and you can feel stuck in them. Sometimes they lead to emotional reactions and angry thoughts. If you don't know how to handle stress, you may react or do or say things that you later regret. So learning to handle stress effectively in a healthy way may be the most important thing you can learn. Mindfulness is a simple but powerful tool to check in with yourself and tap into your own wisdom. You just let go of your thoughts for a moment and focus on your breath, going into your lungs and back out again. Just breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and notice how that feels. It is as simple as that. This helps build self-awareness. By letting go of your thoughts, you become more present in the here and now and let go of those worries about the past and future. The longer you can rest your thoughts, the more you can develop clarity about your life and kindness towards yourself and others. The very quick example that you could use daily is a mindful minute. If you feel comfortable, let's practice. To focus on your breathing, either with your eyes open or closed, and with one hand, feel the warmth of your hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Now just take some several slow, deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just notice how that feels. Maybe the next time you feel something negative creeping into your mind, try to focus on your breath and practice deep breathing for one minute. I regularly teach at the YMCA on Fridays at 4.30 and I'm presenting mindfulness at the Impact event May 10th and I hope to meet many of you there. Our final segment is from Ms. Mersh and Ms. Winswitz who will be sharing tips on how to address friends who may have a substance abuse problem. Hi Skyline, I'm Ms. Winswitz. And I'm Ms. Mersh. We're going to spend a few minutes talking to you about what you can do if you notice a friend having issues with alcohol or drugs. This is an important topic but can also be very personal and sensitive. There are some students that struggle with alcohol dependency and binge drinking and we are here to give you some quick stats, signs, and resources to help you along the way. According to the 2014 Skyline Healthy Youth Survey, 18% of sophomores and 43% of seniors have reported having consumed alcohol in the past 30 days. 10% of sophomores and 23% of seniors have consumed five or more drinks at a time in the past two weeks. These statistics show that the majority of your peers are not drinking. However, if you have a friend that does have a problem, it is crucial that you know some resources for them to get the help they need. First, if you feel comfortable, have a conversation with them, making sure you are in a safe environment where you can have a private conversation and both are sober. It's important to let them know that one, you notice there's an issue, two, are concerned, and three, you are willing to be there for them and get help. It's not helpful to sound accusatory or angry with your friend. Let them know you care and follow through. It's also important to know signs of someone who has an issue with drugs or alcohol. Sometimes it's tough to tell. Most won't walk up to someone they are close to and ask for help. In fact, your friend will probably do everything possible to deny or hide the problem. However, there are some signs you can look for that are listed on the screen. If your friend is experiencing any of these, or especially a combination, it's time to look for resources for them. This is not something you need to solve or handle on your own. On the screen are some resources for Skyline students. A great place to start is to drop into your counselor's office during lunch. We're also fortunate to have a substance abuse counselor, Jack Lane, here on campus every Thursday. If you feel uncomfortable or not ready to talk to someone in person, there's an anonymous student referral form found at the front desk in the counseling office. We know how much you care for the people in your life, and just remember that you have the opportunity to make a positive impact on their lives and keep them healthy. You always have the choice to help your friend. It's not always easy, but the right support can change a life. Thanks, Skyline. We care about you.
And finally, last week, the Eastside Fire and Rescue performed a drunk driving simulation for Skyline juniors and seniors. The Choices presentation was meant to bring attention to the severity of the choices people make under the influence. Not if, it's when, because it will happen. And that's why we're here today, because we want to stop this from happening. In the Choices Assembly, I was the drunk driver, and just being in that role was life-changing, just because I had to go through an actual, like, DUI test and that was really scary and the officer treated me as if I was drunk and so that was also like terrifying just because knowing that you're going to get in trouble for something that you could have easily prevented is just it's so scary. They realized like how impactful it was because they knew me when they realized that it was somebody they knew was involved in this scenario. It hit a little closer to home than it may have otherwise. For the first couple minutes, we as the actors were just kind of looking around, not real sure what to do. And that's just really scary seeing like one of your best friends on the hood of your car, not knowing if they're alive, not being able to do anything, and then just being in such a mode of panic yourself that you really can't process anything. We have lost so many people to things that we can't control, but this is one thing we can. And I think we all have the responsibility to make good decisions so that we don't go through this. This accident is not something that happens rarely. It's, it happens all the time and it happens here and it has happened here. And I think we should take responsibility for what's happening and take the steps to avoid this. Just be responsible and think about the impact that your choices have. So if you ever find yourself in a tough situation, just know that there's always another option and there's someone that will help you out. Well, Skyline, we hope you enjoyed this student wellness takeover. For the last piece of news today, here's Molly for sports. Hey Skyline, I'm Molly Nakao. Welcome back to sports. We're short on time this week and need to keep sports short, so let's get right into it. Baseball, soccer, golf, and track are all transitioning into postseason Kinko. Baseball managed to clinch second place in Kinko and have their first game against Mount Sai on Monday. Soccer remained undefeated all season and their first postseason game is on Monday against Mount Sai where we will be selling scarves for $20 and the first 100 people get in free. Now here's Kat Petros with what's to come postseason. Hey Skyline, it's Kat Petros. Varsity Boys Soccer has done a great job this season and has remained undefeated. I caught up with some of the captains to hear their ideas on the season and on what's to come. The season so far has been really good for us. Uh, we've been undefeated in Kinko, and we had a tie against Issaquah uh, last Friday, which was or last Thursday, which was a 1-1 uh, draw. It was great to see uh, McKinley Fodness put away the, uh, the the goal that tied it, tied it up, and it was uh, it was awesome to have all the fans up in the stands cheering us on. Uh, it just really makes the environment great for us. This will be fun. It's a it's a great group of guys. We've uh, I've known a lot of them for a, for a while. So it's just fun uh, atmosphere and stuff, and hopefully we'll be able to keep playing and get as many games in as possible. Um, looking into playoffs, we have the Kinko Championship this uh, upcoming May 9th, and so what that game means for us is that if we win it and we haven't won it in the past, I think it's 13 years, it'd be something really cool to bring back for the school, uh, as well as we'd get an automatic seed into state, and so we wouldn't have to play or have playoff games to get into the state round. And uh, other than that, I'm just really looking forward to being able to play with all my friends out on the field and enjoy all the people up in the stands and just overall have a great rest of the season. Wish the boys good luck in playoffs. Back to you, Molly. Good luck, guys. Can't wait to follow you on your road to state. Congratulations to postseason competitors Elaine Kim, Namita John, Madison Cooley, Kendall Faranda, Cindy Lynn, and Anna Park. The Kinko Tournament is on May 9th at Snohomish Golf Course at 12 o'clock. Good luck, girls. Track and field had two invites, Shoreline for the boys and Lake Washington for the girls, who took home third of 70 schools. Kinko Championships is on May 11th and May 13th, and JV Kinko is May 12th. Good luck, Spartans. Looks like that's it for this week. We'll have a more detailed rundown on sports next week. See you later, Spartans. Back to you, Jenna. But before we go, we'd like to wish a happy birthday to Shin and Parker. That's all for this Friday. Stay gold, Skyline. What was up with your face? I don't know, it just died. It just died on you.